Seabirds find comfort in the company of others. They nest in large colonies. When they come to a new island that they might want to join, they look for those clues, those auditory and visual clues that birds are succeeding there. And they're used to nesting with others of their kind, maybe a mixed flock of seabirds, but they have relatively few places to be. They're smart, they have great eyesight, so they know this is not a real bird. But like us, they can recognize the clues that it is a bird. The colors are in the right place. It's a, basically a bird shape. In the same way that we can recognize a stick figure on a walk sign as a person, these birds can recognize a basic bird shape as a bird. Some people ask us if we are tricking these birds. Well, we kind of are tricking them, but I like to think that we're communicating with them. Since humans have such an outsized impact on the planet, it's really our responsibility to let these birds know where can they nest safely. A lot of our decoys are using conservation projects on the ground, doing the field work to either restore a lost colony or relocate birds to a safer place. But some are also used as educational tools by conservation groups to teach people about the threats faced by different species. And sometimes they are just used for enjoyment. Puffins were eliminated from most of the main coast in the late 1800s when a lot of birds were being killed off. Birds were hunted for meat and for their eggs and for feathers. And uh, people really didn't think about the future for them. In 1973, Steve Kress started what he called Project Puffin, restoring puffins to Eastern Egg Rock. And the idea was to get some puffin chicks from Canada where they're abundant raise them on Eastern Egg Rock, and then when they fledged, they would come back to Eastern Egg Rock. And an essential part of that project was not only bringing a source population down from Canada, but, but showing them that Eastern Egg Rock was now again a good place to nest. To do that, he spoke to them, communicated with them using decoys and sounds. Decoys for puffins, decoys and sounds for terns were essential. He needed to make that island look like a seabird colony before it was in fact a seabird colony. There was success. Once the puffins were there, it took a couple more years before they started breeding. So in 1981 was the big moment on the 4th of July when the first puffin was seen carrying fish down under the rocks. Decoy production season is during the winter because during the summer is bird breeding season and we are fully occupied. That's when we take orders and we produce these decoys made of recycled plastic. The molds have Mad River Decoy, our founding parents name on them and Audubon. We've done at least 47 different species with the molds that we have. As long as we paint it up with the right color palette. It's very exciting to sit in my paint shop in Maine and prepare these birds to fly off to distant lands. And we've sent them around the world to projects in 19 different countries, everywhere from Canada to China to South Korea, to little islands across the Pacific, most of the coastal states in the interior. Another component of our social attraction system are these mirror boxes to create more images and in this case, active images, kinetic images, because if a real bird comes up, it's gonna see another real bird and it will be moving and potentially very enticing. Having so many nests together is a real benefit for them. Many eyes to look for predators, their food is on the move, and having many birds out there seeking food can help you find it. It seems 
so distant, just a few miles away, resting in the water serene. Science, 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 science. The Gulf of Maine is warming faster than any other body of water, changing the diet of the birds. So the fish are changing, the fish migration. When we study the diet of these birds, we can get a sense of what the whole colony is eating and about the survival of the chicks related to that diet. And now we're doing more with tracking birds, where they go to forage, where they go to migrate, using all this new technology. This will be our 50th year. As the population of birds on the islands grew, we've also gathered more and more data from those birds. Since they are excellent indicators of environmental health, we can really gauge the quality of the marine ecosystem by how they're doing. What I love about working with these birds out on these islands is really everything. It's a perfect environment. You are very in tune with the weather, with the tides. In addition to attracting birds to these islands, Steve really attracted a stellar group of people. So it's thrilling to work with people who care so much. And to be in a really rugged habitat, it's, it's such a pleasure. It's a very uh, special thing in this world to be in a place that is not dominated by humans. So that's really what I love the most.